Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's take a closer look at the shape of the distribution of the sample means. Now notice that we have some very peculiar population shapes. We have a rectangular distribution, we have a U-shaped distribution. I know it looks like an M, but essentially you think about it like this, it's U-shaped, and maybe it's skewed or J-shaped. Hmm, what do the distributions look like when we just look at the samples? the means of the samples. How are they distributed? Well, it depends a lot upon the sample size. Now, that's a big contribution to the shape. Notice that we have a rectangular population. These are population curves, and these are the sample curves. So maybe I'll put a dotted line in between. So on the left side, we're dealing with populations. On the right side, we're dealing with distributions of the sample means, the averages of the samples. Notice when the sample size is small, n equals 2, we don't have a normal distribution. It looks very peculiar. Notice that it somewhat resembles to some extent rectangular, not quite. It begins to take on the shape from its original population shape onto eventually what we call a normal shape. If n is large enough, if the sample size is large enough, the distribution of the sample means will always turn, turn out to be a normal distribution. Notice when we get n equals 5, it looks a lot more like a normal distribution. And when n equals 30, we have a well-defined normal distribution with a well-defined means, average of the means of the samples. Same when we have U-shaped. Initially, it doesn't at all look like a normal distribution. Now it looks more like a normal distribution when n equals 5. By the time n equals 30, again, you have a very nicely shaped, well-defined distribution that looks normal with a well-defined mean or average. Even when it looks like this, and it's skewed to one side, notice that originally with small sample sizes, it doesn't look like there's a normal distribution, but eventually you make the sample size large enough, it also becomes a normal distribution. Notice that it's a little bit further to the left, that the mean or the average of the sample distribution, of course, will be towards the average of the population as well. So you can imagine that this, of course, then will be moved over a little bit to the left. Position-wise, it's moved to the left, but the shape of the, of the distribution of the sample means still looks like a normal distribution. So all of these are very nicely well-defined normal distributions. As long as the sample size of the samples we use is large enough, it always ends up being a normal distribution. And then, of course, the means of that if the sample size is large enough and you have enough samples to make a distribution, then you'll find that the average of the distribution of the means will equal the average of the mean of the population. And again, that's the key, the clue to all of this, because with the samples we could then find information about the population even when the population is very large. And that is how it's done.